Hello everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and in this video I want to continue our conversation about the Diels-Alder reaction, now focusing on the requirements that we have for our dienes. As I have already mentioned in my introductory video to the Diels-Alder reaction, the link in the description below, of course, not every diene going to work for us. The first requirement is that our diene needs to be a conjugated diene. So, in other words, we can only use the dienes that have two carbon-carbon pi bonds, like this, that are adjacent to each other and that are separated by a sigma bond in between themselves. So, for instance, this buta-1,3 diene is a conjugated diene, while this buta-1,2 diene is not a conjugated diene, so it's not going to work for our purposes. And likewise, this penta-1,4 diene is also not a conjugated system, because our double bonds that I have on this molecule, these guys, they are separated in between by the sp3 hybridized atom. So, the next requirement is probably the most confusing one for a lot of students, and that is the subject of our conversation today. The diene needs to be in or able to assume the S-cis conformation. So, first of all, let's look at the difference between the S-cis and the S-trans conformations. This is the S-cis conformation, while this is the S-trans conformation. The two conformations have nothing to do with the stereo configuration of the double bonds themselves. Rather, we are looking at the overall orientation of the double bonds compared to each other. If they make a C shape, like this, that is going to be an S cis conformation. If they make a zigzag, like that, that is going to be an S trans conformation. For the purposes of the Diels Older reaction, the diene needs to be able to assume the S cis conformation, so be like that and not the S trans conformation. And that can be achieved via the rotation around the single bond in the middle of the molecule. The S cis conformation and the S trans conformation, they are typically going to be in an equilibrium with each other. And if it is difficult to visualize what's going on, make a model of a simple butadiene that I have here on the screen, and with your molecular model kit, physically rotate around the central bond and see how it actually looks like. And you are probably looking at me right now and thinking like, hey, Victor, why are we even talking about that? This is trivial. Well, the problem is not every diene is going to be able to assume the s -cis conformation or will be in the s -cis conformation to begin with. In some cases, like for instance in this equilibrium over here, we may experience steric hindrances that would physically prevent the molecule from rotating around the single bond. So the structure that I have on the left that would be in my s -cis cis conformation is going to be highly unfavorable, so we are not going to be able to make our molecule into the S cis conformation in this case, and since our molecule is going to be predominantly like 99.9% .9 cases in the S trans conformation, well, the deals all the reaction for this molecule is physically not going to be possible. Or here is another example, for instance. Here, the rotation around the single bond that we have between our double bonds, it is physically impossible, because if we wanted to rotate this molecule and convert our diene from the S trans conformation that it currently is in into the S cis conformation, we would have to physically break our ring, and of course, we cannot do it by simply rotating the bonds. Which means that neither of these molecules will be able to effectively react in the deals all the reaction, because they physically cannot assume the conformation that is required for that reaction. Now, more often than not, your diene is going to be given to you in the S trans conformation, and it is your job to convert it into the corresponding S cis conformation, uh, if it is physically possible, of course. And this is one of the most common challenges that students struggle with. Let's face it, not everyone has a good 3D imagination, and rotating molecules in space can be quite difficult, but as I always say, if you cannot do it in your head, do it on your paper. Let me illustrate what I mean by that. Say I have this molecule, and this molecule is obviously in the S trans conformation, because my double bonds, they form a zigzag rather than a C shape. So if I wanted to convert it into the corresponding S cis conformation, I would do the following steps. First, I would number the atoms of my diene 1 through 4. Let's say we are going to start from the left and number that as 1, 2, 3 and 4, like so. 
You can do it from the right side as well, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters to me is that I am numbering my atoms of the diene itself and I am not numbering anything else so I don't lose track of what's going on in my molecule. Next, I'm going to draw the stem for the s cis conformation in the C shape that I want to see for my deals all the reaction and I will also renumber that as well. As I've mentioned in my last video, I personally like to number it from top going counterclockwise so that's how I'm going to do it here as well. Now here is where the tricky part is. We need to add the groups to my diene paying very close attention to the stereo configuration of each double bond. So my carbon number one here and correspondingly here, we are going to have a CH3 group on that carbon number one. And that CH3 group looks trans from the bond between two and three. So this CH3 group is trans from that bond, which means that when I'm adding my CH3 group to my C shaped, my S cis diene, I'm going to put that CH3 group over here, which is also going to be trans to my bond between atoms two and three. So that CH3 group is going to be right there. Next, I have this methoxy group that is sitting on my carbon number two. So carbon number two is right over here and methoxy group is going to be on the same side with the CH3, with the pink CH3 group, which means that my methoxy group must be right over here on the same side with my CH3. So I'm going to show it like that. Next, my carbon 3 here and here doesn't have any substituents, so I'm not going to show anything on carbon number 3 correspondingly. And finally, my carbon number 4 here and here, on that carbon I'm going to have this isopropyl group. And the isopropyl group is again trans from the direction where the atom between 2 and 3 is, which means that my isopropyl group on number 4 should be sitting somewhere over here, which is going to be trans to my atoms 2 and 3 like that. So adding my isopropyl group onto a carbon number 4, it is going to be looking directly down in this case. And of course, if you are still not 100% sure if you did it correctly, you can double check the stereo configuration of each of your double bonds, and if you have the same stereo descriptor, aka E or Z stereo descriptor, then you have done it correctly. So for instance, here, the double bond between atoms 1 and and two, which is here and there in my final products. On the original molecule, I have the higher priority over here, higher priority over here, so the first double bond has the Z stereo descriptor in the original molecule. When I pay my attention to how my product looks like, I again see the higher priority here, higher priority here, so that is still the Z stereo descriptor, which means that I placed my groups correctly. In a similar fashion, if I look at the stereo descriptor for the double bond between atoms 3 and 4 in the starting material and in my changed conformation, then what I'm going to see on the left side, I have the higher priority over here and over here, which means that the pink double bond is going to have the E stereo descriptor, and if I do the same analysis for my pink bond in my S cis conformation, I have higher priority here and higher priority over here, so that is going to be as well an E stereo descriptor for that double bond as well, which means that again I did my assignment correctly and I put my uh, groups where they should be in my molecule. So remember, when you are moving your molecules in space, the entire thing moves. So if something was looking initially in one direction, there is no reason why it should still be looking in the same direction after you move your molecule around. Now, of course it can happen, but don't box yourself into mindlessly pointing your groups in the same direction where they were pointing originally always analyze your structure as you are building your structure. And of course, with practice, it's going to be a little bit easier to do, so you don't have to do the step-by-step -step analysis like that, and you'll be able to do it by just looking at the molecule. But as I said, that requires practice. Talking of which, here are a couple of examples. Pause this video now and work on converting these molecules from the S trans conformations that I'm showing here into the appropriate S cis conformations. Then, once you have your answers, check them with me. You got it? Here are the answers. Did you get both of them correct or did I catch you on any of those? 
Let me know in the comments below. So now, when you know how to deal with your diens, we'll have to look into the radio selectivity of the deals of the reaction and how to choose the correct way to combine our diene and diena file. It is not as simple as it might seem, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and enable the notifications so you don't miss the next part in the series. Hit the like button to help promote this video and help more students see it, watch this video next, and I will see you tomorrow.